Okay guys, so check this out. Here in Lightroom, if you wanted to change the color of something in your photo, obviously you would go to the HSL panel right down here. And then let's say I wanna change the color of this person's jacket. So I could go and adjust the blue slider or I could click on this little option right here, sample the blue in his jacket and then drag up or down to change the color. But there's two problems that we're having here. The first problem is that look how we're also adjusting the color of the background. And that's because when you're using the HSL panel, you're adjusting all of the colors in your photo globally. So that means that when I adjust this blue channel in the HSL, it's going to adjust all of the blues in my photo and not just the color of his jacket. The second issue that we have is we're actually limited by the hues that we can change this jacket to because if you look at our blue channel, we can either have purple or we can have a cyan green color. We can't really go outside of this color area. So what if you wanted to change the jacket to something like red or yellow or just a totally different version of what you have here? Now this is a problem that a lot of people will go into Photoshop to fix, but there's a better way of changing colors in Lightroom, especially when you're trying to change the color of clothing. And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. My name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and today we're going to talk about a better way of changing specific colors here in Lightroom. Now this is actually something that I talk about in my new photo editing unlocked course which will help you to master Lightroom and craft your very own editing style. Now if you want to learn more about that course and also get access to it, I'll leave a link for it down below. So here in Lightroom I'm just going to reset this jacket color so we're basically back to our starting image and what I want to do is change this color just to something different. I don't want it to be any of the options that we had here in the HSL panel and more specifically I don't want to adjust the background color in any way. I only want to target this jacket. Well to do this the obvious adjustment is going to be using the selective adjustment brush which can be found right here. So clicking on that we're going to go and paint over his jacket to basically tell Lightroom where we want our adjustment to take place. But what you'll notice if I go and begin to paint over his jacket here I'll press O on my keyboard to view that mask. It's very easy to actually accidentally spill over the edges of your subject or whatever you're trying to change the color of. So in this example, you can see how I've spilt over the edge onto the snow. If I paint it along the edge of his arm, I'm now spilling over onto his pants as well. So this is a bit of a problem when you go to change colors because that means you're also going to adjust the color of his pants and the color of the snow because it's also selected. So there's two ways that you can actually refine the selection so it's only affecting the color that you're trying to work with. The first tool is called Auto Mask. So once you have your adjustment brush selected, down here in the brush options, we can click on the auto mask option. So I'm going to just first delete this and with auto mask checked off, I'm going to go and create a new mask. So clicking on his jacket and then painting around, but this time notice how my selection or my mask stays totally on the inside of his jacket. It doesn't spill out onto the snow. Even if I go around the orange area, it does a pretty good job to stay on the blue even though some of the outside feather is spilling onto his pants. And this is the magic of auto mask. And this is only the first cool feature that we have for refining our selective adjustments here. So what the auto mask tool does, and I talk about this a lot more in depth in another video that you can find in the corner right now, but essentially what it does is samples the color in the center of your brush and finds other similar color values or luminance values to lock the selection onto. So since I have this nice blue dark jacket, Lightroom knows that I probably don't want to be sampling this white bright snow in the background. So that's why it does a really good job to stay along the edges like so. So this is the first way of making that selective adjustment before we do our isolated color changes. Now with this tool, you could technically just go around and only use auto mask to make your selection. However, when you're going to change the color of clothing specifically in Lightroom or the color of anything for that matter, using a color range mask is going to make this selection process even easier. So I'm going to actually zoom out here and then just use a nice large brush. I still have auto mask checked off and I'm just gonna make a very fast and quick adjustment around his whole body here. I don't really care 
if something messes up and if it spills over somewhere because I know that my adjustment will be refined with this color range mask in just a moment. So this is pretty good to me right here. I have a basic coverage of the entire jacket and so that looks pretty good right there. Now let's go and apply our color range mask onto the selection so then we'll have a perfect selection of all the blues in his jacket. So now with our selection created, I'll go to the range mask option and change it to color. Now I have this little eyedropper tool here and I want to go and sample the color of his jacket. So clicking on that eyedropper tool, I'm gonna to click somewhere on his jacket like so. And notice how all of that red suddenly refined itself and it's not selecting as many areas as it was before. So I'm gonna go and add a couple different samples because there's the highlights in the blue, there's the shadows and that kind of thing. So I wanna make sure all of those blue colors are included in our selection area. So holding the shift key, notice how I have a plus icon. I'll go and click somewhere in these shadowy areas. That's gonna refine things even further. And then I can go and add a couple more samples like so. So now I have three different sample areas as you can see here. And now the red area, AKA the mask of our selection is only showing up on his jacket because those are the blue colors that we just sampled. If you notice that there's anywhere that needs touching up such as down here, all you have to do is just click back in the range mask option and then you'll get your brush tool back. So then you can just paint over those areas. And since your range mask is active, it's going to lock on to only those blue hues so you don't have to be super careful when you're doing these types of adjustments now. So with my mask looking totally complete, I'll press O on my keyboard to hide that red highlight. And now let's go and make our color adjustments. Now, as you probably know, you can't use the HSL adjustment with a selective adjustment because all of your selective adjustment options are only here within the mask panel. So for changing colors of a selective adjustment, you have to actually use this little hue option right here. But as you can see, we have all of the colors available to us. So let's click on that and move it around to see what happens. Notice how the color of his jacket changes as we move this hue and we can pick any color we want with way more options than what we had with the HSL. That's because we're not limited to just the blue color range. We're able to go between multiple color ranges and even add totally new colors that wouldn't be otherwise possible with HSL. So let's say I want to change this color to a nice green and if you want to say make it look a little more vibrant or just brighten things up a little, don't be afraid to use the exposure slider or the saturation slider to quickly make this happen. So for example, I could go and drag this up and I can brighten up that jacket color a little bit and then I can make it a little bit more vibrant as well. So now it's this bright, rich green. After you change some of the colors, it can become apparent that there were some areas that need some brushing up still. So you can just paint over those to touch everything up really quickly like this. And then that way you know that you're getting the perfect result because sometimes depending on the color, any missed brush areas become a little bit more obvious. So in this case, there's just a couple little bits around his body that needed to be touched up. Now let's say you wanted to make this completely black, for example. Well, in that case, I actually don't really need any color, so I can just keep that desaturated and I can just drag down the exposure like so. And then now he has a nice black jacket. If I zoom in, there's still those details around his jacket, so it looks relatively realistic, but it just gives the appearance of his outfit fit a totally different look because we obviously went from color to black. Now if you wanted to go in the opposite direction and make his jacket completely white, then you could obviously just drag up the exposure slider. That might look a little bit too bright, but then you bring down the saturation so it's has no color in it at all and then you can adjust the whites and highlight slider just to tone things down a little bit and make things look a slight bit more realistic. So now with some of these adjustments using all of our exposure sliders we can go from a color to white or black. So basically with your adjustment brush and a color range mask you can literally change the color of anything you want specifically here in Lightroom. It's just as good as Photoshop if not easier because there's a lot less masking and selections that you have to do, most of it is automatic with the help of the sample options in the color range map.
mask. Now this is one of the many things that I talk about in the photo editing unlocked course, which is the perfect place to help you master Lightroom and get more comfortable creating your very own editing style. Once again, if you want to learn more about this course as well as sign up, you can access it via the link in the description below. Anyways, that's all I have for you for today. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.